All right, so this is our online tutorials for the senior high school student. And uh, as discussed earlier on, we'll be talking about matter. We'll be talking about matter. But for today, being the trial uh, or the introductory part, we'll just do only with one slide. I mean, one uh, tutorials, okay? And basically, it's about the basics of matter. The basics of matter. So let us begin. So what is the meaning of matter? It is worth knowing that almost everything around us is what is made up of matter. Everything around us. So you can look by your side, the table by you, perhaps the phone you are using, the laptop you are using, the curtain in your room, wherever you are, everything that is surrounding you is made up of what? Matter. And even what you feel, they are all made up of matter. They are all made up of matter. So what then is matter? So matter is anything that has mass or weight and occupies space or has volume. So basically, it must have a mass or weight, all right? Then it must occupy a space or it must have what? A volume. So if you are defining matter and you don't bring these things in, then you are talking about something different. Because if you are defining matter, all these components must be found in your definition to have the full max. So matter, again, is anything that has weight or mass and occupies space or has volume. All right. So what then is mass? So mass is simply the amount of matter contained in an object. The amount of matter contained in an object. That is mass. And the weight of an object is simply the force exerted by the object on downwards due to what? the force of gravity. For instance, when you are holding your phone, you will know that if you leave your phone, it will fall down. Why? Because there is a force of gravity that is acting upon what? the phone. And it's acting downwards. It is acting downwards. So that is what? The weight of the object. That is simply the weight of, an, of the object. So anything that you are having that is not having the mass or is not having any weight, then basically we can describe it as a matter, isn't it? Yes, we cannot describe it as a matter because matter must have mass or it must have what? Weight. All right. So note that certain things have names but are not matter. So yes, like we said earlier on, almost everything around us is made up of what? Matter. An example is the light. The light. So why is the light not a matter? Light is a form of energy. It is a form of energy and it is made up of what? Electromagnetic radiation. So actually light is not having a mass, it's not having what? A weight. So we cannot describe it as what? As matter. Because matter is made up of what? Some substances in them. Don't forget we said matter has what? Mass. And mass is the amount of what? Matter or is the amount of substance in that what? Object. And this amount of substance, we call them what? The particular nature of matter, which we'll be discussing in a bit. But you see, they are made up of what? Atoms. They are made up of ions. They are made up of what? Molecules. For light, they are made up of what? Electromagnetic radiation. Electromagnetic radiation. That is why we cannot describe light as an example of matter. All right. So, what are the forms of matter? So, matter exists in actually two forms. We have pure substances and then we have what? Mixtures. When we say pure substances, that means they contain a particular kind of what? Of substance. Okay, a particular kind of substance. For example, if they are made up of matter, if they are made up of maybe atoms, that means everything about it is made up of what? Atoms. If they are made up of ions, that means everything about that substance is made up of what? Of ions. All right. Now we also have what? Mixtures. So mixture simply means what? Different kinds of substances coming together to form one substance. And that is called what? Mixtures. That is called mixtures. All right. Someone is joining in. 
So that is called what? Mixtures. So note, all kinds of matter are made up of what? Atoms, ions, or molecules. And these are called the particulate nature of matter. In some books, you hear the building blocks of matter. So in your quizzes or in your exams, they can ask you what are the particulate nature of matter or what are the building blocks of matter. And your answer should be atoms, ions, or molecules. So these are the particulate nature of matter or the building blocks of matter. So actually these particles are so small that we cannot see them with our naked eyes or with unaided uh, eyes. So what are the characteristics of matter? Like I said earlier on, every matter must have mass, must have what? Weight. They must occupy space and they must have what? Volume. Actually, space simply means volume, all right? And they contain what? Particles. What are these particles? These are the atoms, the ions, and the molecules. These are the atoms, the ions, or the molecules. So we are seeing that these particles cannot be seen, cannot be seen with unaided what eyes. So if you want to see them, then you need to use some other means of seeing them. All right. So traditionally, matter exists in three states. First, we state they exist in two forms, which are the pure substances and the mixtures. Now they exist basically in three states basically in three states, but there are others. But basically, we have solids, we have liquids, and then we have gases. So in an exams, or at our level, when they ask us what are the three states of matter, these are li solids, liquids, and gases. Of course, we also have the plasma state, and then the Bose-Einstein condensate. The plasma state, and then the Bose-Einstein uh, condensate. But at your level, when they ask of the three states of matter, please stick with solid, liquids, and gases. And gases. All right. So let's quickly look at the characteristics of these states of matter. These states of matter. So each state of matter has its own physical what, characteristics. What are they? So first of all, let's start with solids. Solid. So what are the characteristics of solid? Or how will you be able to identify that this is a solid or that is not a solid? So first of all, the particles that are making up the solids are closely packed. They are closely packed, giving it compact nature. Like your phone, for instance. See how compact it is. See how solid it is. That's because the particles that are making it up are closely what packed they are closely packed so that is one of the features of solids what else they cannot be squeezed or compressed easily again you can use your phone as an example can you squeeze your phone can you compress your phone even, even if you can how easy is it all right so they cannot be squeezed or compressed easily so that is a solid they cannot also what flow. If you put it on the floor, it cannot flow to one side or it cannot move. All right. Again, put your phone on the floor. It will not move. It will be there looking at you. That should tell you that it is a characteristic of what? Of a solid. They also have a definite shape and volume. Yes, your phone has a, a, a rectangular what shape, isn't it? Rectangular what shape, and of course. It occupies what volume or it has what volume. And again, the force that are holding these particles together are very, very what strong. So when you look at all the state of matter, the, the, the state with the strongest force of attraction between the particles are what are solids. They are solid. So it has what a very strong force that is holding the particles closely together. What are examples? So you can talk about laptops, chairs, pens, pencils, books, uh, your phone, anything solid. All right, anything solid. 
So you can add the rest to it. So basically, these are the characteristics of uh, solids, of solids. So let's move to the next state of matter. All right. So let's talk about liquids. Liquids. So liquids are not closely packed as those in solids. So if you compare a liquid to solid, liquids are not closely, relatively, are not closely packed. However, it is more compact than in gases, which we shall come to that later. So the particles are not closely packed as those in solids. They cannot relatively be squeezed or compressed. Relatively, that means I'm comparing it to what? To solid. I'm comparing it to solid. All right. So they cannot be relatively be what? Squeezed or compressed. They can flow, yes. If you put water on the floor, trust me, it will flow. It will flow. However, in solid, you realize they cannot what? Flow. Again, solids do not have definite shape. However, they do take the shape of its containing what? Vessel. Just like uh, the water in a vortex. Okay? So water is an example of what? Liquid. So the water in the vortex the water in itself doesn't have a shape. However, because of its containing vessel, which is the bottle, you realize that uh, 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 the water is having what, a shape. However, it is not its own shape, but rather the shape of the containing what, vessel. The shape of the containing vessel. So that is one way to know that this is a liquid or this is a solid. And again, they do have a definite what, volume. Yes. They have a definite volume. The particles are also free to move. However, they are somehow limited. The reason why they are able to, to move, I mean to flow, is because they have a little bit of what? Freedom. All right. However, comparing it to gases, they are limited. They are what? Limited. So take note of that. And the forces that are binding them together are not as strong as those in solids. However, they are stronger than those in gases. But comparing it to solid, they are not as strong as that. All right. So what can you tell about the examples? We made mention of what water. We can talk about coke, soup, anything liquid, all right, or anything that does not have what, a, a, a definite shape. Anything that can move freely, anything that can somehow, some way be squeezed, all right, easily, all right. So, please, all of these things are all what, examples of uh, liquids. So, let's move to the next uh, state of matter, which is the gases, the gas, gases. So, what are the particles? So, these particles or molecules that are making up the gases are widely separated. You remember in solid, they are what? Closely packed. In liquid, they are what? Uh, not as closely packed as in solid. But in gases, they are widely what? Separated. Widely separated. They can easily be squeezed or compressed easily. Mm -hmm. You can easily squeeze them. And you can easily what? Compress them. They can flow very what easily. So comparing it to liquid, this one flows better, or gases flows, gases flow better than liquid. Again, what do we have? They have no definite shape and volume. So it has no shape, it has no volume. All right. In liquid, they have a definite volume, but they do not have a definite shape. So sometimes you need to know how to distinguish between all these states of what? Of matter. And again, since they can flow easily, that tells us that the particles can move about freely in any what? Direction. Don't forget, they are also widely what? Separated. That means there are a lot of spaces in between them for them to move in any sort of what? Direction. In any sort of direction. And of course, they have the weakest force 
of attraction that are binding the particles or the molecules together. They have the weakest. They have the weakest force of attraction. So what can you talk about the examples? We can talk about what the oxygen, the nitrogen, the hydrogen, the air, and so on and so forth. So basically, these are the basic uh, state of matter which I have given you the what the are characteristics. Of course, we have the plasma and the the Einstein one, which of course is not at, at our level, so no need to really dive deep into them. All right. So, but basically, all that you need to know are these three states of matter and their what features or their characteristics. All right. So basically, just with the pictorial view, these are solids, liquids, and these are what gases or gas. And we made mention. So in summary, we are saying the solid are rigid, they have fixed shape, and they have what fixed volume. And of course, they cannot be squeezed or squashed. All right, you cannot squash them. The liquids, they are not rigid. They have not what fixed shape. However, they have what a fixed volume, or they have a definite what volume. And again, they cannot be what squashed. But relatively to solid, they can be squashed. All right, relatively to solid, they can. All right. Now let's go about the gases. Also, they are not what rigid. As a matter of fact, they are very free. They have no fixed shape, and they have no fixed volume. And again, these ones can be what can be squashed. They can be squashed. So basically, these are the or this is the introduction to what we'll be doing in subsequent uh, tutorials. All right, we shall talk about. Uh, the particular nature of matter in details, talking about the atoms, the ions, the molecules, talk about the elements, you know, atoms, you'll be talking about the element, you'll be talking about the configuration, and a whole lot of things. And of course, talking about these things, we need to also talk about the method of separating them or converting from solid to liquid or from liquid to gas or from gas to liquid or from liquid to solid. We'll talk about all of these things in subsequent words lectures and that is why i don't want you to miss any of them and i'm encouraging you to be a part of this great movement we are trying to to do but for now this is just the introduction of what we'll be doing next all right so basically there's the end of the part one of our tutorials or the introductory what part